I'd like you to meet Cassandra Forbes and her service dog, Nova, her Casanova. She's been a resident of Redcliffe ever since she was the age of two, and she spent most of her time in the rink since she was three. Currently, she is a figure skating coach and a student at hairdressing and design. Cassandra ended up with two stories. I'll call the first story Shattered Dream. My siblings skated. They were, my sister was a figure skater. My brother played hockey, and I can just remember wanting to be out on the ice. My mom finally, she begged the coach and they let me on. Yeah. I took my can skate course, uh, which is like the little ones that learn to skate. And then I took my level one, which is more um, of the older girls going to competition. I got my course, you're allowed to get it at the age of 16. And okay. I had started coaching a little before that just to kind of see how it was and if I liked it and I loved it. So as soon as I turned 16, I went and got the course. My family went on a cruise for a family vacation and they had some skaters on the cruise. We got to go there and after a little bit of convincing or just talking with them, they said, we would love to have you come out and skate with us, um, just on practice ice, come and watch our practice. After I saw the cruise and the performers, I ended up meeting a different coach of mine that I currently have. He skated with Disney. I fell in love with everything about it and the idea of traveling and sharing my love for the sport. Yeah, after you um, have a high school diploma and you turn 18, you're allowed to send in a video audition. Show off your skills. Yeah, so I trained for several months doing that. The shatter began, in fact, over and over. <laughs> First part of the shatter was about the aud audition. So my video was actually on our club computer. The video was accidentally deleted and then COVID hit. You didn't have a chance to re redo it. Yeah, because anyone over the age of 18 wasn't allowed to skate. There was no skating for me. I'd rented the ice a couple of times to try and get my video done, but from being off the ice for so many months, it wasn't the same. And my grandpa passed away. All in that period of time. Yeah. Now things opened up. Could you audition again for Disney on Ice? They started taking only in-cast auditions. So if you were a previous cast member, you were allowed to audition, but anyone outside of the cast wasn't allowed during that time. So that door shut that dream. I turned my focus back to coaching rather and decided if I couldn't share my love for the sport around the world, why like there's no better place in my hometown. So I started coaching. That's actually when I got my level one certification. I started sharing my sport with the youth. Well, all of this certainly impressed me, uh, how you could be thankful despite of all of these setbacks. Story number two, it's from the point of view of Oakley, who is also a member of your family. So after my family's house fire, my other dog, Oakley, actually woke up my mom and I, and after the fire, he had quite a few issues himself. He wasn't sleeping, wasn't eating. He wasn't himself at all. Mm -hmm. So I actually contacted my friend, which I knew was training her service dog, and I just said, is there anything your dog trainer could do for us? Oakley is not okay. Mm -hmm. They actually came over, Jamie and my friend Layla, and they um, met with Oakley, and Jamie said, why don't you come to our training sessions and we will work on Oakley. We'll work with him to get him back to normal. We worked really hard and it was incredible the like changes that Oakley had overcome and he was back to himself and we were so thankful that Jamie and Cindy and Layla and BJ and just everyone. Mm -hmm. Kind of flash forward a couple months, my sister was moving out and Oakley is actually her dog. When everyone found out they were pretty upset because I wasn't going to be in the program anymore because I didn't have another dog. I was only like 18, 19, I couldn't afford another dog. <laughs> That's when Jamie and Layla um, surprised me. They told me one night to come to training that they needed help with. They wanted me to handle Jade, that was Jamie's dog. They surprised me with Nova, they brought her out and uh, I was. it was a total shock, I had no idea. We had talked about me getting another dog. They had it all set up, they had her toys and food and bed and kennel and just every everything I could need to take home a puppy. and. Just anything I needed, they were they were there to help, and it was incredible. And I've been with the program ever since, and I 
can't thank them enough for everything they've done, all the trainers, all their hard work that they've put in, mm -hmm. um, the long hours and everything. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Nova is a PTSD and anxiety dog. She works a lot with deep pressure. That's one of the things we're working on right now. Mm -hmm. I'll just say like a bad night or mm -hmm. something and I am having trouble sleeping. Um, I can lay on the floor with her and she can lay on me and it kind of helps calm me down. It's like it's like a weighted blanket for the yeah. dog. Aww. I would have never guessed that I would be here and I just am, I can't say how thankful I am. What qualifications does Nova have at this point? Nova is a level one certified service dog. There are four levels. Okay. Um, it is, it's rare for a dog to get their fourth level. Level three is kind of our goal, but I'm not in any rush to push it. I'm just, I enjoy being here. I've made lots of friends. Peer support is one of the biggest things in this group. Like I could text in our group chat that we have and just say like, does anyone want to go for coffee? And I'm like, I could say at least five people will say, yeah, absolutely. We'll meet you there. Uh, what's your connection to Jamie? I call him my grandpa. I call Jamie and Cindy my grandparents. I know I could call them and they would be there in a heartbeat. They they want to help and they're, they'll do anything. Oakley, the first responder. I was little Oakley. Since then they call me hero. Now a valuable part in this family. Rough treatment I gave them just so I could save them. We're thankful but bruised by the tragedy. I loved how my wild hair had everyone wanting to brush it, looking good for the day. Want important tasks, but how do I ask? My being peewee had me rubbed the wrong way. It was 4 a.m. when the fire broke out, woke mum with my ear-piercing cries. Downstairs I leapt unto auntie who slept. Had to get them all out despite my small size. Mum ran to the entrance to get coats and shoes, had to grab her, get her out that back door. Yes, no one got burned, but soon we all learned our lives had changed evermore. The first thing you miss is your toothbrush and paste, and needed to buy underwear. At Grandma's place there was not enough space. Then I found uncle's red fishing chair. All day I'd have bedhead. I didn't care. Couldn't eat, couldn't sleep in the night. I could rest in that chair when the family's all there. But I was unsettled. We didn't feel right. I can now do bonfires with the help that I got. I'm Fire Chief Oakley camping in my red chair. Yes, my family has stress, anxiety address as they tame my wild labradoodle hair. I love that dog. I love, I love that dog. Ooh, oh, 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 oh